Beyond the epicenter, a circle of suffering. The devastation extended far beyond the immediate blast zone. A monstrous shockwave, traveling at hundreds of kilometers per hour, flattened everything in its path. Houses on the periphery crumbled, trapping their occupants under tons of debris. Those caught in the open were thrown like ragdolls, suffering horrific internal injuries and crushed bones. The intense heat wave caused third-degree burns on exposed skin, even kilometers away from the epicenter. Black rain, a harbinger of a silent killer. Adding to the nightmarish scene was a chilling new phenomenon, black rain. Contaminated with radioactive fallout from the bomb, it fell upon the already injured and overwhelmed survivors. Many, unaware of the long-term dangers, used this rain to quench their thirst, unknowingly ingesting a silent killer. Radiation sickness, with its delayed and agonizing symptoms nausea, vomiting, hair loss. Internal bleeding would claim countless lives in the days, weeks, and even years to come. Hospitals overwhelmed, a city in chaos. The medical infrastructure of Hiroshima was utterly destroyed. Hospitals, already packed with the initial casualties, were overwhelmed by the sheer scale of the devastation. Doctors, facing their own injuries and limited resources, fought a desperate battle against the tide of the sick and dying. A shortage of blood, bandages, and even basic medical supplies added to the chaos. The cries of the injured and the desperate pleas for help echoed through the devastated city, a haunting reminder of the human cost of war. Estimates of the unbearable, counting the dead and injured. Estimating the death toll in Hiroshima proved a grim task. The intense heat of the blast vaporized many victims, leaving no trace behind. Others succumbed to their injuries in the immediate aftermath. Radiation sickness claimed countless lives in the weeks and months that followed. Official estimates put the initial death toll at around 80,000, with a further 70,000 succumbing to radiation-related illnesses by the end of 1945. These numbers, however, only tell part of the story. Many survivors faced long-term health problems, including cancer and birth defects. The psychological trauma inflicted by the bomb would continue to ripple through generations. Atomic Bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Part 2 Nagasaki, a similar story, a different devastation. Three days later, Nagasaki faced a similar fate. The terrain of this coastal city, however, played a role in the destruction. Nestled in a valley, the bomb's effects were channeled, creating even greater devastation in some areas. Here too, the scene was one of utter devastation flattened buildings, raging fires, and horrific injuries. Black rain added another layer of horror, and hospitals were overwhelmed by the influx of casualties. Estimates put the death toll in Nagasaki at around 70,000, with similar long-term health effects for survivors. Myths and the legacy of Ground Zero. An Eondring myth is that the bombs primarily targeted military installations. While both Hiroshima and Nagasaki house some industrial facilities crucial to the war effort, the vast majority of casualties were civilians. Another misconception is that the effects of the bombings were instantaneous. The reality is far more complex, with radiation sickness claiming countless lives long after the initial detonation. The stories of Hiroshima and Nagasaki serve as a stark reminder of the horrors of war and the devastating power of atomic weapons. Ground Zero, a term now synonymous with utter annihilation, became the tragic stage upon which the true cost of human conflict unfolded. These devastated landscapes serve as a constant reminder of the responsibility we face to prevent such tragedies from ever happening again. Chapter 9 Living with the Fallout, Long Term Effects, and Radiation Sickness a shadow cast over generations, the enduring legacy of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki unleashed a horror that extended far beyond the initial devastation. While the mushroom clouds dissipated and the fires died down, a silent killer lingered radiation. Its effects, insidious and far-reaching, would cast a long shadow over survivors and future generations. Radiation sickness, a spectrum of suffering. Radiation sickness, a horrific consequence of exposure to atomic bombs manifests in a spectrum of agonizing symptoms. Within hours of the detonation, victims experience nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea prelude to the nightmarish days to come. Hair loss, a telltale sign of radiation's attack on the body's cells, followed. Internal bleeding, 
a consequence of damaged organs, caused excruciating pain and weakness. For those who survived the initial onslaught, death often came within days or weeks. A delayed threat, cancer and genetic mutations. The insidious nature of radiation lies in its delayed effects. Years, even decades, after exposure, survivors began developing various cancers, leukemia, thyroid cancer, and lung cancer among the most common. The intense radiation damaged their genetic material, potentially impacting future generations. Children born to survivors faced an increased risk of birth defects, developmental delays, and an even higher risk of cancer themselves. The bombings, in a chilling twist, became a multi-generational tragedy. Psychological scars, trauma and the enduring fight for survival. Beyond the physical ailments, the psychological trauma inflicted by the bombings was immense. Survivors grappled with survivors' guilt, the horrific memories of the blast and its aftermath forever ashed in their minds. The struggle to rebuild their lives amidst the devastation, the loss of loved ones, and the constant fear of radiation's lingering effects took a heavy toll. Many survivors became advocates for peace, their stories a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable suffering. Medical challenges, treating the untreadable. The medical world face unprecedented challenges in the aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Doctors, with limited knowledge of radiation sickness, struggled to find effective treatments. Skin grafts offered some relief for burn victims, but for those suffering from internal bleeding or radiation poisoning, there were few options. The long-term health effects further strained medical resources as survivors grappled with cancer and other ailments. Myths and the legacy of radiation. An eondering myth is that the effects of radiation are immediate. While some symptoms appear quickly, radiation sickness manifests over time, with some cancers taking decades to develop. Another misconception is that the dangers of radiation are confined to the immediate blast zone. Radiation fallout can travel significant distances, exposing populations far from the epicenter. The long-term effects of the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki serve as a stark reminder of the enduring legacy of war. Radiation, an invisible enemy, continues to claim lives and inflict suffering generations after the initial detonation. These events stand as a chilling testament to the responsibility we face in the nuclear age. A responsibility to prevent such tragedies and pursue a future free from the threat of atomic weapons. To debate over necessity, justifications and criticisms, the decision to use atomic bombs remains a fiercely debated topic. Proponents argue that it was a necessary evil, a way to force Japan's surrender, and prevent the immense bloodshed anticipated from a full-scale invasion of the Japanese mainland. Estimates suggest allied casualties could have reached into the millions, with countless Japanese deaths as well. The swiftness of Japan's surrender, they argue, validates the decision, however horrific. Opponents point to shifting circumstances. Opponents of the bombings point to the fact that Japan was already on the verge of surrender. The Soviet Union's entry into the war on August 8, along with the devastation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, significantly weakened Japan's position. Critics argue that a negotiated surrender, without the use of atomic weapons, was a viable option. They point to ongoing diplomatic efforts and messages exchanged between Japan and the Allied powers as evidence of this. The ethical quandary and the shadow of the Cold War, fethical implications of using atomic weapons against civilian populations continue to be a source of intense debate. The vast majority of casualties in Hiroshima and Nagasaki were civilians, raising questions about the morality of such a weapon. Some historians argue that the decision to use the bomb was driven not just by a desire to end the war in the Pacific, but also by a nascent desire to display American power in the emerging Cold War with the Soviet Union. Beyond the debate, the human cost of peace. Regardless of the justifications, the human cost of the bombings is undeniable. Estimates put the combined death toll in Hiroshima and Nagasaki at around 130,000 with countless others suffering from radiation sickness and long-term health effects. The bombings left a deep scar on Japan, a nation forever grappling with the physical and psychological wounds of war. Myths and the legacy of surrender. An eondering myth is that the atomic bombs were the sole reason for Japan's surrender. The reality is more complex, with the Soviet invasion and the devastation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki all playing a role. 
Another misconception is that the bombings brought a clean and immediate end to the war. Fighting continued in some pockets for days after the surrender announcement. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Japan subsequent surrender marked the end of World War II. However, they also ushered in a new era, the nuclear age. The debate over the necessity and morality of the bombings continues. A sobering reminder of the devastating power of these weapons and the responsibility we face to prevent their use ever again. The path to peace, as history reminds us, is often fraught with difficult choices and enduring consequences. Chapter 11 Rising from the Ashes, Reconstruction and Recovery in Postwar Japan A Nation in Ruins, The Immense Task of Rebuilding The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki left Japan in ruins. Entire cities lay leveled, infrastructure was destroyed, and the nation grappled with a deep sense of loss and trauma. Yet, amidst the devastation, a spirit of resiliency emerged. The Japanese people, known for their work ethic and sense of community, embarked on a monumental task reconstruction. From ground zero upward, rebuilding cities and lives. The immediate aftermath of the bombings was a desperate struggle for survival. Survivors, facing injuries, radiation sickness, and homelessness, banded together to clear debris, find shelter, and locate loved ones. International aid, though limited, provided some relief. The Japanese government, facing a devastated economy and social fabric, prioritized basic needs, food, shelter, and medical care. Slowly, the process of rebuilding cities began. Hiroshima and Nagasaki, once bustling metropolises, were transformed into vast construction zones. Debris was cleared, temporary housing erected, and the skeletal remains of buildings raised to make way for a new future. The scars remain, the long road to recovery. The physical scars of the bombings were not easily erased. Many survivors faced long-term health problems, cancer, radiation sickness, and psychological trauma. The healthcare system, strained to capacity, struggled to cope with the overwhelming needs. Memories of the bombings haunted survivors, casting a long shadow over their lives. The psychological impact extended to future generations, with children, born to exposed parents facing an increased risk of birth defects and health problems. A changed nation, embracing peace and technological advancements. The bombings had a profound impact on Japanese society. Pacifism gained widespread support, a stark contrast to the militaristic nationalism that had fueled the war. The horrors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki served as a constant reminder of the devastating consequences of conflict. Japan, under the terms of its surrender, renounced war as a means of settling international disputes. This commitment to peace, enshrined in its constitution, has become a cornerstone of its national identity. An economic powerhouse emerges from devastation to prosperity. Despite the immense challenges, Japan embarked on a remarkable economic recovery. Fueled by a skilled workforce, a strong work ethic, and government support, the nation experienced rapid industrial growth. Technology became a major driver of this success, with Japan emerging as a leader in electronics, automobiles, and other sectors. The scars of the war remained, but Japan's transformation into an economic powerhouse was a testament to the nation's resilience and adaptability. Myths and the legacy of recovery. Onyandering myth is that Japan rebuilt quickly and completely, erasing all traces of the bombings. While the nation achieved remarkable economic progress, the psychological wounds and long-term health effects of the bombings continue to be felt. Another misconception is that Japan's pacifism is solely due to the atomic bombs. The horrors of war and a desire to avoid future conflict played a significant role as well. The story of post-war Japan is one of resilience, hard work, and a commitment to peace. From the ashes of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, a nation transformed itself, emerging as a global economic leader. However, the legacy of the atomic bomb serves as a constant reminder of the devastating costs of war and the importance of pursuing peaceful solutions to conflict. Japan's post-war recovery stands as a testament to the enduring human capacity to rebuild and move forward, even in the face of an imaginable tragedy. Chapter 12, A Pandora's Box Unleashed, The Nuclear Arms Race and a World Forever Changed. The atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki weren't just a local tragedy. They marked a pivotal moment in global history, 
ushering in the chilling era of the nuclear arms race. A weapon of unimaginable destructive power had been unleashed, forever altering the balance of power and casting a long shadow over international relations. From Manhattan Project to Mutual Assured Destruction MAD, Febamings were the culmination of the Manhattan Project, a top-secret ally effort to develop atomic weapons before Nazi Germany. With the war in Europe over, the focus shifted to Japan. The decision to use the bomb in Japan, however, was not solely driven by the desire to end the war quickly. The United States also saw it as a way to demonstrate its technological press and establish itself as the dominant power in the emerging Cold War with the Soviet Union.